Two other somewhat advanced features of the Scala language uh, crept up when we looked at the fill method for building larger arrays and lists. And these are currying and pass by name. Actually, tabulate also used currying, but only the fill used pass by name. And it's worth telling you what those things are because they can be you know, significant. Uh, they definitely occur in the libraries and we're going to be using them in a lot of other libraries as we go through uh, basically building up our, our Scala knowledge because they're, they're helpful. So what are these two different concepts? I'm actually going to put these methods up here. So the first one, currying, is actually fairly simple. I want to write an add method that adds two values. Now I'd normally write this as x and y with the two values there returns an int equals, and I could just say x plus y. Uh, we're not really caring about the implementation here that much. This is the way you'd normally write this. We have a single argument list that takes two arguments. If I make this curried, I would write it like that. And the idea here is that we can call add and just pass it one of the arguments, and that gives us back a function that is waiting for the second argument. Now in Scala, to do things that way, let's see, plus three equals add of three, you'll note that we get an error here. You actually have to be explicit. You have to tell it that you want this, that you, know, you meant to leave off that second argument. And so putting an underscore there, just like with the underscore lambda expressions, this underscore says, hey, there's an extra argument here that we haven't provided yet. And now plus three is, as you can see, a function that takes an int to an int. And so I can use that function. And so the currying is basically the ability to apply arguments one at a time. It turns out most of the time that we're going to use it, it's not so much for applying the arguments one at a time. The real benefit of the currying comes from the fact that the type inference can be done more intelligently if you have the, the arguments separated. In the case of fill, they did it because it's easier to have an argument, especially a pass by name argument, only have one argument in the list. So what is this pass by name argument? Well, first we should talk about how things are passed normally in Scala. So let's call, I want to make a method called three tuple. Um, and the three tuple function is actually going to be really simple. I'm just going to pass in a value. It'll be an int. And it's supposed to return an int, an int, and an int. Actually, let's make these doubles. Uh, we'll make my example here potentially easier. Returns a tuple of double, double, double. OK. And what is this going to return? Well, I only passed in one value, so I'm going to return a three tuple with that one value in it doesn't seem like a very useful function, but it's good for illustrating what's going to happen here in a second. So normally when I call this, so if I call three tuple and I pass it five, well clearly I'm going to get back five, five, five. Okay, there's, there's no surprise there. What if I passed it something that was going to, uh, that could potentially have different values? And the reason I picked double is for example, math.random. A math.random is a function that gets called and every time it gets called it gives you back a new random number. But the normal passing semantics do a well pass by value, pass by reference uh, type of situation because you should think of everything in Scala as a reference. It does a it evaluates this thing, gets a reference to the object that evaluates and passes in that reference. So this function gets evaluated once, its value gets passed in, and that one value comes out here. So if I were to print this out, and I think I'm going to want to comment these things. By the way, control slash comments a block of code because I don't feel like typing stuff in there. 
Oops, except I am taking input. Where am I taking input? Build list. Oh, I have something that's not implemented. That would be the grade. Let's hard code the grade so it doesn't matter. Everyone gets a zero. Okay. That should be reassuring to the students who watch this video. So as you can see, the three tuple got built and all three values are the same. Now what if instead of passing in just a double here, we had passed in a function that gives back a double. So this is a function that takes no arguments and gives us back a double. The problem with this is that now I have to call it differently. So I have to add that type of thing in there and every time that I use this I have to do that. But if I do that it is very clear now that because this is a function I am calling that function three times which means I'm going to call three different random numbers and indeed I should get a tuple with three different random numbers. This type of functionality is very useful in a number of situations but having to pass it as a whole function isn't and so Scala includes a syntax called pass by name. And in pass by name, I'm basically going back to, that's what we had originally, but I'm just going to add a rocket here. Note there are no parentheses. This is not a function, this is a pass by name argument. And what that does is instead of evaluating this code and then passing the value in, it takes this code and wraps it up in what's called a func and passes that code in so that every time that I use A, A gets reevaluated. And so this is how, for example, the array.fill, I passed it math.random, and I got a whole bunch of different random numbers. That's because the second argument to fill is passed using a pass by name argument. By the way, the reason why people like doing this is a lot of times pass by name arguments, you might have several lines, and if your argument is only, or if your list only has one argument in it, you can replace the parentheses with curly braces and then in, include multiple lines of code. Uh, so that's why it's it's kind of helpful to curry a function, especially if for, if this second argument had been a pass by name argument, there are advantages to that. Um, we'll actually see examples of that in some future videos.